Good morning and welcome on this Christmas morning to our service of Holy Communion. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. And at this time we light all of our candles all of our Advent candles. Candle of love, hope, peace, joy. And we also light our Christmas candle. Today we light the final candle, that the Christmas candle, the Christ candle. For Christ is born anew among us. Our Advent waiting is complete, but our yearning for justice is rekindled as we continue to work and wait, call for and co-create God's final reconciliation of all things. Let us pray. God of reconciliation, source of all life, may we seek Christ with the wonder and curiosity of a child. May we find Christ flowing through your beloved waters and healing your beloved land. And may we wait on Christ, the reconciler of nations and peoples, whose reign of justice will never end. Amen. And together we say our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our Lord and God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together our Gloria as a thanksgiving omitting the choruses. Glory be to God in heaven, peace on earth to all mankind, Father, heavenly King, creator, God of power undefined. Jesus Christ, our Saviour, only Son of God, by faith we know, Lamb of God, the world's Redeemer, love and mercy to us show. You alone, O Lord, are holy, Jesus Christ, you are most high with the Father and the Spirit, Trinity, to you we cry. <clears throat> and our collect for this Christmas morning. God Most High, you sent your Son into the world to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that he may continually live in us and reign on earth as he reigns in heaven, where he lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We now have our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke 2, 1 to 14. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration where, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child, and while they were there, the time came 
for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. The shepherds and the angels. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is the Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. About the time Mary was due to have her son, she and Joseph had to travel 80 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem for a census. This was for tax purposes, we're told, and the records from the sentence, census are apparently still in existence. As you can hear, the dog is having a dream. So the records for this census are apparently still in existence. Bethlehem at that time was crowded, and as you know, they had to stay in an animal shelter. And there were prob probably little stalls to separate the animals, and that's where Mary and Joseph stayed. And as you can imagine, these accommodations were crude at best. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their sheep. And these shepherds were often shunned by those who lived in the towns and villages. Uh, they were basically just simple men of the outdoors who lived with their sheep. And yet these lowly shepherds were the first ones to hear the good news. And when they heard the good news, they went into Bethlehem and were the first to worship Jesus. But it wasn't just the lowly who were invited to share in his birth. Three high-born men from the east were also invited and arrived a little later. Now it's very interesting to see the way God works. Throughout his ministry, Jesus made it clear that the humble, those who knew they were sinners, the lowly, the outcast, the homeless, the tax collectors and the prostitutes were entering the kingdom of God first. How often do we thumb our noses at people like these? He said that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom. And that, that's a person who loves their riches more than they love Christ. He said that whoever loves their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for his sake will gain it. The prophet Isaiah announced, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Now I want to point out something very important here. We, we are those who live in the land of the shadow of death. As we sit here this morning in our homes in relative peace and maybe gather together as families to celebrate Christmas, Others huddle shivering in the darkness without a home in so many places in the world. And as we open our gifts, we fill up on turkey and all the other good things, others live in squalor, unable to feed their children. <coughs> <coughs> 
we may not personally be living in the shadow of death, but many of our human, human family elsewhere are. We may think that on this British Isles of ours, we're isolated from all that, but the world is getting smaller. And what affects other places also affects us. The recent global pandemic has illustrated that. There's the story of a man who transformed the front of his house with thousands of lights at Christmas. Many people came by to look at the beautiful scene. But in the mail he received news that his neighbour was suing him for disturbing the peace. And that's exactly how it is with the light of Christ. When we let it shine, others who love darkness will try to extinguish it by doing things like changing Happy Christmas to Happy Holidays, or Winterval, as some have suggested, by setting up Santa as a god instead of the real one, and replacing Jesus, the real gift, with counterfeit commercial ones. <coughs> There's a story of a little boy whose father was often away at sea, and as he was looking at a picture of his dad, the boy said to his mother, I wish Daddy could just step out of the picture to be with us. This little boy is expressing the desire of so many. If only God our Father would step out of the picture to enter into the world. Well, that's exactly what he did. He stepped out of the picture, painted of the Messiah, and stepped into our world in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. He not only stepped into our world, but into every waiting heart. Not only that, but those who are willing to receive him are also given the right to become God's children. Against all logic, we become the spiritual children of God. You know, there's an old saying that you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, but that's exactly what God did. He reached down and despite who we were, and what we were, he turned us into his children. And he still reaches out to all who will receive him, and he always will. We were important enough for God to be born a tiny infant in a drafty, smelly stable. We are valuable enough that God was willing to die for us. So don't let anyone convince you that you're worthless. Because in God's eyes, you are very precious. So precious is every one of us that God will never give up searching for us. The Christmas story tells us the amazing truth of God's rescue plan for those living in the shadow of death. It tells us that God our Father has stepped out of the myth and misunderstanding of who he is and actually shown us. The Christmas story tells us that there is light even for those who live in the darkest places or those whose hearts are darkened. It tells us that God knows what it's like to, like to live in rough and common circumstances. That God knows what it's like to live like one of us. God celebrates his birth with lowly people like the shepherds and with ordinary people like us and also with the rich and the powerful. God has been here. He hasn't gone away. He's still here now. We just need to open our hearts and let him in. now affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> In this season of gifts, 
We celebrate your coming as the only gift we really need and the greatest gift the world has ever been given. As we unwrap gifts and marvel at the imagination of the givers, may the child in the straw be the gift that really overwhelms us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we gather as a family or extended family, we celebrate your coming to be part of a human family. Christmas can sometimes be the catalyst for family strife, and we pray that the child in the straw may hold us together. May our care for each other reflect your care for us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of hope, your coming into our world is like the dawn after a difficult night. And as we struggle with our own personal darknesses, the conflicts and temptations, may the child in the straw draw us to his realm where your light drives away darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we come to you this Christmas, we ask you for a fresh start and another chance to show that we are indeed your people. Take our celebrations and fill them with the golden hope to sustain us through the coming year. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. And our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when his kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for well, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. 
that we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, those who have much faith and those who have little, it is Jesus himself who invites you. It is his will that those who seek him should find him here. the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. And we say together our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And do have a lovely, relaxing, peaceful, healthy, Christmas until we meet again. God bless.